Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bits and more. Link in the description below. Hi, right, welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot, sniffing out the Madden cheese as always. I got a tip video for you today, uh, something a little bit different. I did a pass defense tutorial, uh, which is pretty popular. Like I said, if you guys like that, hit the like button enough. I would do a run defense tutorial, how, be, how to be a better uh, user run defender, um, as well as, you know, just basically how to set up a defense how to play the run uh, correctly which a lot of people um, don't necessarily know how to do so uh, if you want to see more tip videos like this do me a favor hit the like button and I'll do that next um, I have some other uh, options to do I have a lot of tip videos I could do but this one here I think I'm covering the biggest bases which is pass defense in the first video I'll pop a link in the top right corner should be popping up now and now run the defense in this video uh, so whether you like to run a 4-3 a 3-4 a 4-4 uh, I'm going to show you a little bit with the nickel 3-3-5 wide 9 which is the defense I use I could use this defense the entire game um, and I made a, a video on that too so I'll pop a link for that if you want to watch that I'm not going to go into too much detail uh, but basically there's a couple principles you need to follow when stopping the run uh, this year specifically they have something called the weak box system which is basically if you come out in something like a big dime or something and somebody on the offensive side comes out in a three tight end package um, it's not going to be as effective you could use to be able to run this type of defense against those type of offenses and it wouldn't really matter where now you'll see some massive pancakes so the first thing I would say to do and I gotta grab the second remote here. Is make sure you that when you wait till they pick their offense. And I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna pick a two tight end set. Doesn't really matter. Uh, but typically, you would see on the bottom right corner here would say two tight end, one running back. So you gotta always wait till you see what you're looking at there, and then you want to go and pick something with matching or relatively matching personnel. Another thing, and it's not gonna let me do it here, uh, but there's a uh, typically if you back out, there's a category here for. Um, coaching adjustments now uh, you can either do this in your settings prior to coming into the game or you can do this during the game but make sure you turn off your uh, your auto flip the defense auto flip is horrible and it has been since they instituted it I guess they they kind of got that in there maybe for people that don't know what they're doing but if you know what you're doing take that off because it is a huge disadvantage it'll ruin every play that you try to set up uh, by basically doing its own thing so take that off so, like I said, principles, these are very basic principles to setting up a defense to stop the run. Now, number one, the reason I like this defense is because I just like the way it is when you spread it. I'm going to spread everything, and now you have a really good, um, you know, setup here where your, your two outside linebackers are, are in a key position where even though I'm running a two tight end set, which is typically, your two, your two tight end set will typically get wider than the defensive front, but in this 3-4 with, it, with its spread, you see how it doesn't work that way. So basically to stop outside runs, you always want somebody wider than the, than the furthest blocking uh, offensive player um, inside the box anyway. You don't have to worry about outside the box with like Hayden out here, but you typically want a linebacker or a safety. Some plays I've put out online have a safety performing this task, but you always want somebody wider than their blocking tight ends or their blocking tackle, whatever, because essentially when the ball gets snapped, you need somebody to control that outside area, get outside leverage, and stack and shed to the point where they're either going to force the ball back up the middle or they're going to at least cut off the outside runs because outside runs are deadly in this game. So you need somebody outside to do that. Even if you have to manually take this linebacker and move him out, that could be a good way to go. You just need somebody out there that can take that away. Now I call it a cover two play, which is important for my next tip. Pressing is a good way to stop outside runs because your cornerbacks there will engage with the receiver faster and they'll shed the block faster. Now this won't work. Cover threes, which I can't really see what I got here. That's a cover two again. Let's see if I can put up a cover three. Cover threes, you can't really press. It doesn't work the same way. If you press this year, uh, your, co your cover three corners tend to get beat. So that's why I picked the cover two to show that because cover twos will play the run a little bit better because you have less opportunity for getting beat on the pass. So now if I do this and he actually passes, my pass defense suffers. Uh, but originally, like I said, that cover two won't have that same issue. So cover two is definitely better for stopping the run. Man coverage as well is pretty good. I'm going to see if I have a man coverage in my audibles. Man coverage is pretty good too, and I'm going to show you that for a reason. I find that man coverage sometimes stops the run better uh, than zone coverage, and I'll show you why. Because essentially, a lot of people try to create blocking advantages by motioning over their receivers. And typically, uh, your, your, your run defender, or I'm sorry, your uh, cornerback, which he didn't do it here, uh, I'll have to base the line to get that effect. 
but typically your uh, your cornerback will follow a receiver across the field. So if somebody tries to create a blocking advantage by motioning a receiver or a tight end, sometimes uh, you'll get a defender that will follow and it'll take away that blocking advantage. All so right, so man, here I got a pretty good look um, running my three through five wide nine, uh, but basically. Um, you know, this is an inside run. I set the random run, so I don't know if it's gonna be inside or outside. But I could tell right away the pulling uh, tight end there is a dead giveaway. It's gonna be run up the middle. So a lot of times where the ball's gonna go is really decided by your by the lineman. Whether if it's a guard pulling outside, you know it's gonna be an outside run. Uh, if it's somebody pulling inside, you know it's gonna be an inside run. So I see that tight end coming. I know where the ball's going. So I go right to that block to fill that hole. Now I don't necessarily have to make the play, but I have to fill that hole. He could have probably went to the right side, but that's not where the play is designed because, like I said, the dead giveaway is where that block or where that blocker is going. So I know he's going right in front of me. So I got to stop that gap. And the defensive tackle actually got off and stopped it, allowing me to make the play. Uh, but like I said, watch your linemen. A lot of people watch the running back. It's just like a boxing term. You don't watch where the hands are going. You watch where the shoulders, you watch the shoulders that are moving in boxing the same way. And I, I know I compare this to boxing a lot, but um, basically that's the, the shoulders tell you where the punch is coming from, just like the blockers tell you where the run is coming from. Now, if you're playing a user and this gets, gets, st gets stopped like this, yeah, they could take it outside, but chances are by the time they take that wider angle, that other guys are going to get off their blocks. You can see right here, this guy's, oh man, I backed up. You can see right here that the defensive tackled or uh, the defensive end next to me is getting off of his block. So if he would have tried to take it outside, he would have ran to another guy. But you have to take away the shortest point of attack first. The shortest distance is a spot you got to fill. And I know that me filling that gap, if I don't make that, if I don't make that play, it can be problematic. But you have to take that away. You have to at least take that shot. Um, other than that, I'd like to show some outside runs because I think that's what people have the most problem with. So we're going to back right, so out So I'm going to show some tips as far as stopping outside runs. Once again, I have my defense set up. This is actually a goal line offense I got going here. But I have my defense set up with the, with my outside uh, guys basically patrolling the edge. As you can see here, um, I have them down in the box so that they can, they can basically get outside containment. And I'm using the middle linebacker. So basically, as the ball starts off, I think that... One of the most important things is keeping adequate depth behind your, uh, basically you're treating your defensive linemen like blockers and your linebacker is the running back. That's the best way to describe it. Just like when you're running the football, if you get too close to a guy being blocked, he'll magically get off and grab you. So you have to keep a certain amount of depth behind them because you don't want to get blocked. So this is the same idea, it's just on a defensive side where you want to keep adequate depth behind your blockers and you're basically playing the safe man. So there I am taking off. I'm mirroring the running back uh, to a point. I mean, I, I want to be a little bit ahead of him because I got to get ahead of him to stop him. But you can see how I'm essentially mirroring him to the outside. And the blocker there, you know, he's pulling with him. He's going to get stuffed up. Now, 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 once I see that the play is coming to a head where he's running out of blocking, I got to start making my adjustment and get to the angle. But I have help. It would be a different story if I knew if there was nobody around me, it'd be a different story. I got two guys helping me out, and he's got two blockers. So me with these two guys make three people for two blockers. So I know I got help to the point where I'm not trying to sprint out in front of the play. If there was nobody there with me, it'd be a different story. But I take my time just because I know I got people there. And you can see how basically that outside defender that I set up pre-play by the way um, essentially gets uh, the play but even if he didn't I'm there to help out there's another guy there to help out so this play uh, is just blown up but like I said you don't always have to make the play sometimes you're just um, you know they're keeping crowd control to an extent unless you have to make the play so I didn't I didn't feel the need to, to shoot in and make the play I just had to be in position uh, where if my defense failed me that I can make the play you don't always have to make the play but now I'll show you what it looks like when you have to make the play all right so I want to show this play here again real quick I'm the middle linebacker again I don't make the best read. I shoot this gap because there's a big hole there. I didn't read that the tight end was pulling, so I actually didn't know where the ball goes. But either way, I have to fill that gap regardless because if I don't, the user's going to see that big hole and shoot up in it. So that's fine. So his job was to go to the left. The hole gets stuffed up by one of my defenders because, like I said, I set up a good defense so I don't always have to make the play. So this guy shoots that lane. He gets off the block. And now it's a one-on-one -on -one foot race to the edge, uh, which uh, looks like a receiver. Is that LaFell? Uh, it's a one-on-one -on -one foot race to the edge with this defender. Now, as this play continues, I switch over right about here as I see the guy getting out wide. And uh, the point that I'm trying to make here is it's basically a one-on-one -on -one where if I don't make this tackle, it's a big play. So there's two ways to tackle in this game. I get a lot of people that ask me which way I tackle, when to tackle, what sort of way, whatever. Uh, but the answer is real simple. Before you decide how to tackle, whether it's a hit stick or a safe tackle, you have to um, look at what's around you. 
Who's with you? Who's helping you out? Where, where's your backup? And right now I have zero backup. So the second I realize that, it's safe tackle time because if I don't make this play, it's a 20, 30 yard run. If you look, the, the nearest guy to help me out is getting blocked and he's probably gonna continue to get blocked. So really the only guy I have to help me out is about 20 yards down the field. So I know that, you know, I could try to hit stick, but it's really safe tackle territory. And if you guys don't know that, it's just double tap in the X, whether you're on Xbox or PlayStation or whatever, uh, it's X on PlayStation, A on Xbox. But the second I look around behind me, you have to know who's with you, who's helping you out, who's around. And the second I know nobody's around, it's safe tackle time. I got to make the play myself. Make sure you're always switching to the nearest defender too. Uh, that's key because you can't trust the computer. Computer's not going to get it done. You have to get it done. And then the second I do, I make the play. So that's it. That's the video. If you guys want to see more defensive tips, do me a favor, hit the like button, and I'll do that. Offensive tips too. Uh, if you want to keep up with this series, it's doing pretty good. Getting a lot of views. I think people are liking it. Um, and that's it. Thanks for watching, man. Money shut out.